All right, guys, this is a <clears throat> oldie but goodie and a quickie. So we are going to review axis determination and how we can actually figure it out. So the first question you should ask yourself is, why would we want to do this in the field? Now, arguably enough, it's more important to determine left axis deviation, right axis deviation, extreme right axis deviation as opposed to normal. Uh, that's more important than it is to actually try to figure out the exact amount of degrees in the field but we're going to try to figure out the exact amount of degrees to a point <clears throat> within about 10 or 15 degree difference as a learning point and so we can understand access a little bit more all right so why would we be doing this well if our patient is left axis deviated then the first thing we have to think about is left anterior fascicular blocks or q wave uh, abnormalities from like an inferior wall mi <clears throat> hypertrophy will also cause some left axis deviation as opposed to our right axis deviation which is classic for pulmonary disease patterns or keyways from high lateral wall infarcts uh, bifascicular blocks will also give you some right axis deviation um, if you see somebody with extreme right axis deviation then the first thing you have to think about is lead placement dextrocardia severe electrolyte imbalances so knowing the actual deviation can help us in distinguishing whether or not our patient um, is a COPD -er, or maybe some of the EKG abnormalities that we're viewing are not um, infarction type changes. Now, arguably one of the most important concepts in EKG is realizing that the electrical axis when depolarized towards a positive electrode in that lead is going to represent positive on your EKG, meaning upward um, north of the isoelectric line. And then we all got taught Einthoven's triangle here, in which you have a right arm lead, left arm lead, left leg lead mainly, and then we also have our right leg lead. We're not going to be talking about that for right now. We're going to have these three leads that are our bipolar leads. Uh, lead one would run from right to left, so right arm to left arm. Each one of these have a, their dipoles, which means they have a positive and a uh, negative electrode, bipolar leads. So one would be right arm to left arm, two would be right arm to left leg, and three would be left arm to left leg. Those form a triangle, but it's not an equal triangle. And we all learn Einthoma's triangle as an equal triangle. But when we think about Einthoma's triangle as an equal triangle, we have to think of it electrically equal, all right? In which we'd have to convert down to Einthoma's law. So we were talking electrically equal, in which this equation, lead one plus negative lead two plus lead three will always equal zero. That is Einthoma's law, meaning if you take the R wave added up small boxes in lead one, subtracted by the S wave, do the same thing in two, do the same thing in three, R's minus your S wave, and you plug it into this equation here, your answer will always come out to zero. That is why we can represent Einthoven's triangle in a nice electrically equal um, triangle. Just like this. This is a picture of a normal ECG rhythm in which there is no axis deviation. If we were to add up the numbers from 1, 2, and 3, our equation would equal 0. There's another thing I want you to look at this EKG and kind of imagine. We're going to go to this hex, uh, hex axial reference system in which we would say that the normal electrical axis, going back to this slide here, here's the heart would depolarize down to the left, right, from SA node all the way down to Purkinje fibers. Mainly it's depolarizing towards V5 and V6 here. But in order to find axis deviation, we don't need the precordial leads. We're going to look at these leads. And mainly, when the axis is absolutely perfect, back to this hexaxial, uh, hexaxial reference system here, it's going to depolarize down towards this way, towards lead 2 at around AVR. So on a perfectly normal axis, we would normally see AVL right here as being almost electrically equal meaning equal parts up, equal parts down. It is a biphasic or equiphasic uh, view, AVL mainly. That's why ST segment elevation in AVL, that's very minor, could be very significant. That's a key concept. Well, one of the best 12 lead websites out there is ems12lead.com. It's a blog. Uh, and quoted in there is, in physics, two vectors are equal as long as they are parallel and of the same intensity and polarity. All right. Now, we're not really doing a physics lecture here, but what that's saying is due to Einthoven's law being all the lead views are equal, they equal to zero, that means that they are all equal vectors. So that means if we pulled 
say lead one down to the AV node here to cross the AV node. So one's going to cross the AV node across the heart here from right to left. Lead 2 is going to cross the AV node going down from the right to the left. And lead 3 is going to cross the AV node. Then we get a crossed hexaxial diagram using about the area of the AV node as its center focal point. And that's all Eindhoven's law is saying. We have equal vectors and because they are, we can make all of our vectors, lead 1, 2, and 3, cross at one point. That's how we get the first aspect of our hexaxial system. All right, you with me so far? So that's what it looks like without AVR, AVL, and AVF. Now AVR, AVL, and AVF, augmented vector right, augmented vector left, and augmented vector foot are unipolar leads. They only have a positive view. So what they do is um, they would take the two leads, right? So here's AVR. Our white lead becomes AVR. And it takes the two other leads and it makes it essentially zero, an electrical zero axis between the two points and bounces it back towards that electrode. AVL does the same thing, takes the two other leads, makes an electrical zero point, bounces it towards that electrode, and the same thing with AVF. And when we do that, we can add those three different views to our hexaxial axial system and we get this. Now, once you understand this, everything is downhill from there according to ems12lead.com. If you haven't checked that out, do it. It is an awesome uh, learning resource. So knowing this hexaxial hex system, I put it to the side here because so, we're going to reference that here in a minute. We're going to look at this EKG. This is the normal one we looked at, right? So when we see this, we have to determine QRS axis, all right? Now, you could do the dumbed down version and say, okay, well, lead one is up, lead two is up, lead three is up, so therefore there is no axis deviation going on here. It's up, up, up equals normal. We're going to take it a couple steps further. Start utilizing all of your numbers here. And we're looking at this middle number. This CKG is calculated to be 54 degrees. All right? If we look at this hexaxial reference system here, that's in between two and AVR. So what does that mean? 2 is 60 degrees in the positive, AVR is 30 degrees here in the positive. But when determining it, the first step that we do is find the most equiphasic or isoelectric lead, the most. Then find the lead that is perpendicular to that lead. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we looked at this EKG, and you would ask yourself, which one is most equiphasic? Well, this one, lead 1, is almost all up. This is all up. Lead 3 is all up. AVR is almost all down. Look at AVL. It's got just as much positive as it does negative. AVF is almost all the way up. So AVL is the most equiphasic. So then I go to my hexaxial reference system here and I find AVL. This is AVL right here. And I find the lead that is perpendicular to it. Which in this case would be lead 2. Lead 2 runs perpendicular to AVL. So that is my perpendicular lead to AVL, just like AVL is perpendicular to 2. So once I find my perpendicular lead, I look to see if that lead is positive or negative. Going back to this system here, let's go back to the EKG. AVL here is equiphasic. I look at that. All right. My perpendicular lead to my equiphasic AVL is lead 2. My little arrows here pointing up I have some arrows pointing down, but if lead 2 is pointing upwards, then that means I have a degree axis of about 60 degrees. Looking at my EKG here, it's calculating it to be 54. All right, So we're only 6 degrees off. That's pretty good for eyeballing it, don't you think? So keep this chart on you to kind of make it easier on yourself. Well, here's all your perpendicular leads. 1 is perpendicular to AVF, 2 perpendicular to AVL, 3 perpendicular to AVR and vice versa. So using that will really help you out. Looking at my quadrants here, so normally my normal QRS vector runs in this quadrant. Now when you're doing your research, somebody, some books are going to say that zero is normal, zero to 90 degrees. And anything in between zero and negative 30 is called physiologic left axis. 
This is pathologic left axis between negative 30 and negative 90 degrees. So if you calculate your axis out to being 0 to negative 30, it's normal, but it's physiologically normal is what they call it. Physiologically normal left axis deviation. In this quadrant is pathological left axis deviation. Here is normal. Right axis deviation falls between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And then no man's land up here, or extreme right axis deviation, would be considered absolutely abnormal. All right? So let's look back at this one. This is the normal EKG we just did. What we're looking for here is our aquaphasic lead, AVL. We look to see then what lead is perpendicular to that, which we know from our little chart here. Our perpendicular lead to AVL is 2. So then we go back to 2. Is it pointing up? Lead 2 right here in this hexaxial reference system is pointing up. So therefore it's about 60 degrees, which falls within my normal axis. So therefore there is no axis deviation. Well, let's look at this one. Up, up. That looks equiphasic. AVR is down. This is a little PVC here. Up, up. So therefore my equiphasic lead is lead 3. Then I figure out which one is perpendicular to my equiphasic lead, which is lead 3. Going back to this chart here, well, AVR right here is perpendicular to it. So AVR is pointing down. I go to my hex axis reference system here. Here's AVR. That's an up arrow, so I know it's not negative 50. This is a down arrow, and I use that because AVR is pointing downward, which means that I'm looking at about 30 degrees. And that's almost exactly what it is here on this CKG is 38 degrees. So we're only off by 8. Good job. That sits in the normal axis, so I have no axis deviation. And let's look at one more. So just from looking at this real quick, I have mostly up, up, up. So which means I might have a veering towards the left, but this is probably normal axis. I find my equiphasic lead. Now this one throws a little bit of a curveball in it, but... Yeah, it's all good. Lead 1 is up and down. Lead 2 is up. Lead 3 is up. AVR is down. AVL is mostly down. AVF is up. All right. So we look at our most um, equiphasic lead, which is lead 1. And then we look down at AVF because that is our perpendicular lead. Going back to my hexaxial reference system here, AVF here is showing... Um, 90 degrees so it's roughly around 90 degrees but look at AVL as well AVL is a little equiphasic too and the biphasic lead I'm sorry the perpendicular lead to AVL is 2 alright so because we have two almost equiphasic views here I find both perpendicular views which in lead 1 it's AVF in lead AVL is 2 so I find AVF and 2 and I find a middle point, which is about 75 degrees in between 60 and 90 degrees here, which means my axis will be about 75 degrees. Pretty cool. All right, let's look at this one. This one's a little abnormal. You can do the, the quick way, up, down, down, and that'll tell you that this is left axis deviation, but we don't want to do that. This is good to do in the field when we just have to figure it out real quick. But looking at it, 1 is up, 2 is down, 3 is down, AVR here is equiphasic. AVL is mostly up, AVF is mostly down, so my equiphasic lead is AVR. My perpendicular lead to AVR is 3, going back to this system here. AVR, perpendicular to 3. All right. So I find 3 here. So 3 can either be negative 60 or positive 120. But 3 is pointing down. I look at this chart. Down, 3, negative 60. We're only off by 6. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Let's look at the opposite end. I have down, up, up, which means I have right axis deviation. So let's calculate it. 1 is mostly down. 2 is up. 3 is up. AVR. That's equiphasic again. Mostly down. AVF is mostly down. The... Uh, biphasic lead or the equiphasic lead to AVR is 3. 
3 is pointing upwards, so therefore here, I look for my lead 3, it's pointing up, which means it's 120 degrees. Here, on the EKG, it's calculated to be 126. Pretty close. So basically, if you didn't remember or you can't grasp anything I just went over, if you know lead 1, 2, and 3, up, up, up is normal, up, down, down is left, up, down, down, left, meaning lead 2, and a little food for thought, if lead 2 is biphasic, it's probably always left axis deviation. And then down, up, up is right. Down, down, down is extreme right. If all of your bipolar leads are biphasic, then we call that an indeterminate axis. We really can't figure it out just from looking at it. All right. So this is the basic way that you can just get by, kind of like doing the clock method of drugs in your head. But in order to calculate axis with any type of certainty of degree, use this hexaxial reference system. Remember about your perpendicular views and get the concept down of Einthoven's law and you'll never go wrong. That's a quick review on axis deviation. Until next time, see ya.